Hi. Tech Rower here. Ah, it's time to um, discuss powering up the 3D printer. That's cool. Anyway, a few <coughs> things to prepare. Make sure you have the handbook available. At least there's one page that you're going to need. And that's that one. For the filament calibration. You can see that picture. And then um, I <coughs> got a box of filament with the printer. So I got that one. And I just put it on the um, filament holder to be prepared. But I did not feed it into the printer. I'm not supposed to. So let's have a <coughs> look at the printer. So here's my um, overview setup. And then I have um, the mini cam also um, in, in the game. So anyway, um, I made sure I could access the SD card, the sheet metal piece. As I said, have the manual available. And there's some stick glue. Don't think we're gonna gonna need it right now. And um, that's pretty much it. So. We're going to see if this thing starts. The first. And if we get <coughs> no no indication on the LCD then, or some smoke or something, then I'm going to have to tr try and you know, check. Well, we've got something on the display at least. That's encouraging. Okay, we get to choose English. I'm just gonna wait a little while before I go ahead in the menus just to um, see if any smoke starts coming out of anywhere. Okay, I just paused recording and then waited for a little while just to see if anything would happen and nothing has happened, so that's good. So. I think we can just um, click the next. We can select English in my case. Oops. Oh, that needs to be pushed quite hard. And it'll probably reboot. Well, reinitialize it. So. Uh, okay. Why did it ask for it again? Or if this button is... Ah, oh, it's got a button here also. So I think I this is probably... Okay, I must admit I didn't read all the instructions. So it's probably that one, the one selects, yes. Would you like me to guide you through the setup process? Yes. Self test. So, okay. First, I will run the self test to check most common assembly problems. Okay. Let's see. And test extruder fan. Okay, that's that fan there. Oh, that fan there. Print fan. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to look at it. <laughs> Did it even say okay? I suppose it did. Okay, that's Z axis, X axis. Well, that's. It's not crashing. Okay, bed. I just actually want to move this book. <laughs> just because I'm paranoid. That's annoying. Okay. Okay. 
Ah, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Oh, nice. Okay, that's probably normal. Oh, sorry about the dogs. <laughs> Just when we're making the middle of a video. Okay. Okay, bed warming. The light is on. Oh, it's a pity I didn't have the camera at the right angle. Could actually just temporarily borrow that. See, the light's on. Okay, so doesn't really say okay, but. I mean, the movements looked fine. And the sensing, uh, the thing is it hasn't got any end stops, this one, so it senses through the motor controllers. So it will actually sense when, um, oh, this light's awful. Blinds the LCD. There, oh, better. Okay, it doesn't give a temperature indication. So now it stopped heating it. Okay, it says okay. Now we're gonna have hot end. In my experience, hot ends smell a bit sometimes when they first get heated up, so let's not panic and run around looking for a fire extinguisher if a small amount of smoke comes out from somewhere. Or something plasticky starts smelling. It's only if you really see like deformation in the plastic or something. Uh, I will run the XYZ calibration now. It will take approximately 12 minutes. And this they warned in the video, so okay. So, I'll be back when it's done, because I don't know if we want to sit around on the video for 12 minutes waiting for this to complete. Yeah. And sorry for my sniffliness, it's not, it's not the thing that we should not talk about, it's the uh, pollen, we've got a lot of pollen in the air right now. Okay, it popped up with this, the one should make sure that the nozzle is clean. And of course it's a new printer, so the nozzle is clean, so we can just say okay to that. Is steel sheet on bed? No. Please place a sheet of paper. Okay, this was this paper calibration. a four standard paper in Europe so I'm assuming that that's the type of paper and thickness they're looking for place a sheet of paper under the nozzle during the calibration of the printer immediately okay And you need to keep a hold of it, so actually one has to stick around with this. Well, it's not pressing it too hard at least. Oh, it's going to be so nice when the pollen season is over. And then they say the one should actually try to stay and hold the hold the paper. Just have to try not to hit the camera at the same time. I wonder if we should try and get a... Ah! 
So if I need one hand to hold this on that. It's very uninteresting. I don't know if I could even get a good view. paper where it is. <laughs> okay, so that's number two. I actually don't know what it's doing and I've, I've not read up on the details of the calibration math. But everything mechanically seems to be working and electronics seem to be working and the sensors are working and the fans are working so I think we have at least a quite close to being ready to use print. Of course the first printing will so show. see what it says. Please play steel sheet on bed. Okay. Well, it seemed to think that it got that corner also. It's this corner that, that was a bit suspect because of the... Oh, you can't see it. Because of this hump here. No, come on. There. I was wondering if it was actually hitting that. I suppose that was just me being paranoid. It wasn't actually easy to see if it was or wasn't. Okay, so now we need to take the steel plate. And then we need to... Oof, put it on. Straighten up. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry, hit the camera. of not the camera around a bit. So okay. Mm. Oh, that looks all right. And then we just say okay, I suppose. Measuring reference heights. Congratulations, oh that's nice. Okay, so it's filament loaded. Uh, no. Okay, that's interesting. Now we can actually see it heating up the nozzle. There's a temperature.
Please insert PIA filament into the extruder and then press knob to load it. Okay. Oh, now I can smell the nozzle. Seem to go in at least. Let's see what will happen. Oops. Aha, okay, so it's it's purged it out. Oh, I think uh, and it's asking if it's the correct color. Well, if you can't see it, it's here. And don't touch the extruder, it's very hot. So I'll take it from the end there and just pull it off. I can save that. So I'm going back to the display. And let me say yes. And we'll calibrate the dismal to team the tip of the nozzle and the heat bed surface. Okay, you'll start to print line and you will gradually lower the nozzle, rotating the knob until you reach an optimum height. Okay, and the picture they're referring to is um, is again oh, this picture here in um, uh, 3D printing handbook. <laughs> it's a bit subjective, I must say, but um, uh, I'll give it a go and um, uh, I'll give it a go and see what happens. Uh, I'm not really sure if I get this. Now it's hiding and I can't even check the film.
you can alive adjust set or hide also. Just gonna have to do this offline. Now I'm gonna repeat this, so I'm gonna clean it off. I'm gonna look at the filament, I'm gonna repeat it, and then just as many times as it turns, it like, looks like it's the same as in the picture. I might take a while. Okay, based on a subjective analysis. And this print, which I ripped apart, um, I think it's actually the flatness curve of the filament is pretty much what I would like to have. Um, so I would say that one is. Ah, I'm just gonna say that's good enough for now. Happy printing. Oh, that was. Yeah, well, we haven't printed anything yet, so. But um, it's actually looking pretty good. Okay. So. Now it's to print something. And, um, Just have to remember what they suggested we print. Wait, just a second. Okay, so I didn't really find anything information. I'm just gonna put it in the SD card, see what happens. Ah. Let's see PLA Russo. Benchy. Didn't even have Benchy in here. This is it that one then? Oh, okay. I didn't give any. This one LCD can't show the um, I didn't clean the bed, so now it might actually happen. It might, um, <laughs> yeah, might actually end up not sticking. So I actually didn't clean. I'm not expecting this to be a 100% success. Maybe the set height will still need to be adjusted some more. We'll see. And I don't know if, if it would need to actually have some glue to hold the print down. So we might end up stopping the print because, of the, because it um, won't stick. Oh, 
Should be heated now. According to the temperatures. Oh, now it's waking up. Okay, I'm not expecting this maybe to succeed. Because I don't know if I did a 100% good job on the... Um, on the um, set height calibration. show something better. Ah, oh, I don't know, it's difficult to... One doesn't take these software solutions where you can have the head move out of the way and then takes a photograph. after a while. No, I think too, we think we have some kind of a first layer at least. Mm, it's not screwing up in any other normal ways that I'm used to. But we'll see, as I said, that I'm not 100% sure I calibrated the Z-axis. Probably correctly. And the filament feed is... Uh, I have not adjusted the um, filament feed idler. So it could be... Th this. It, it could be slipping. Or it could be too tight also. So. Ah, there's many different things that one can fiddle with. So, but I mean for the... For, for now, I'm happy if it just prints something quite good. And then um, no one has the world of time to adjust things and read up on them. I actually joined a Facebook group for the MK3 printers. Or for Prusa products in general. So let me exchange some ideas about print quality issues. I could just risk moving it a bit closer without crashing into anything. Yeah, something like that. Move the light. So, the first benchy on the way. Actually, nice and quiet compared to my other printer that I built myself. This is really—it's the um, dry, uh, motor drivers that are very good. I was actually thinking of upgrading my other printer with these. Just, oh, I can't remember what they're called. Tektron, a specific stepper motor driver. And it also enables, that step of motor driver enables you to, to, to use technology that uh, gets rid of all the um, end stops, the um, physical end stops, the dip switch based end stops. So this, this thing can just crash against the end of something and then the motor will tell the electronics that, oh, now, you're, now you've hit the X, end of the X axle or Y axle. So they can make the printer simpler. Has less moving parts, less cables. Mm. 
and you can get that software you can you can actually download the software that supports that so you can actually run with the, with those drivers a little bit more um, fiddly when it comes to putting it together yeah, but it still seems to be printing it hasn't crossed yet Hundred and fifteen degrees, sixty degrees, bed temperature, seven percent done. Not bad for a first start. Didn't have to fix at least I haven't noticed anything that needs to be immediately fixed. I mean there could be some little bit more tuning when it comes to cable management. And I'm still not 100% happy with the way that, that um, yeah, the bed cabling comes in and into that adapter. Or that plastic bit, I think that I would like to have that lower. Because it's a bit curved up, but I don't know if it really has any uh, real world impact on anything. At least the system wasn't warning about crashing into anything. And the, it can actually detect when it has a print crash. It's the same with the, it's because of the motors. The motors will notice, the motor drivers will notice when the stepper motor skips a step. There's no mechanical feedback. I don't think it, it can't tell how much it's. Uh, no, that I don't think it can, is how much it's crashed. But it can actually it can detect the crash. So if I would stop it, then it would actually be able to notice that. Oh, now you, now it's skipping steps. Expecting complete perfection. Didn't get complete perfection out of my other printer. I mean, this is um, PLA plastic printing, so it has its limitations. Okay, I'm gonna just let that run, and hopefully, it will be. I'll be back a little bit later. Well, still running. Hasn't crossed yet. No obvious problems that I can see right now. Part of the deck now. Not bad. So far, so good, I think. Then the Riano tolerances. Yeah, still going strong. 215 degrees. On the extruder, 60 degrees on the bed, 35% complete. Okay, it gives the set height now, 12 millimeters. Oh, not that bad. See, it's reasonable quality.
Mm -hmm. well, still rocking and rolling. I think we're going to get a print. And there's no evidence of it loosening from the bed, at least. Yeah, I don't know. Everything seems okay so far. So, that's the hull finished. Uh, it's just doing the superstructure. No complaints so far. I think I can live with that print. Oh, it's starting to build the... Coming up to the roof now. Still looking pretty good. No complaints. Okay. 95% complete. Not that bad. Really neat print. complete now. See if we can zoom in a bit. Just to get the focus. Well, not bad. This bench is cool. I think I'll take that as a first pass. I've done zero optimization of any kind. Um, let's take. Um, yeah, that's it. Just let it cool down, take it off, and use it. That's good quality. Not bad at all. Okay, I think we have a working printer, which is very nice. Well, anyway, if you found this video to be of any interest, um, consider subscribing. Um, hit the bell icon to be notified of new releases there's going to be more videos um, part of it 3d printing part of it other other things um, i'll pass the word around if anybody's interested and um yeah see you in the next one